Have you ever wondered the reason behind why sometimes we see great men of God and even women of God, that is uh, pastors and prophets, sometimes they end up divorced, having a wrecked up marriage? It used to be one of the questions I used to ask myself some time back and I used to wonder if these great men of God, as perfect as we think they are or they should be, what exactly happens behind curtains? So in this video, the man of God, Prophet Lovi, has revealed some very deep secrets which are very insightful just for us to get to understand exactly what happens behind the curtains. But right before we get into that, here is first of all a list of, of some of the great men and women who are divorced. So for example, the great woman of God, Catherine Kuhlman, we have Kenneth Copeland, we have Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, we have Taiwo Odekuyo, we have Pastor Ayo, we have Prophet Abiara, we have David Adeo, we have the man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, we have Pastor Chris Okotie, Bishop Chris. There are so many of them. <laughs> like there's so many of them. The list goes on and on day in and day out. But that is one thing they all have in common. And the names I've mentioned are some of the great men and women who are doing great and have already done great things for God. So the question is, why do they face divorce? So let's just get to listen what uh, Prophet Lovi is saying. Do you know why pastors fail in marriage? Men of God's marriages die. I'm one of those people that went through that. I got divorced. I'll tell you why it happens. God has never told a man or a woman, go to your wife, go to your husband. You're spending too much time with me. Because also mm. God lusts after you. He wants you for himself. When he gave you a wife, he gave you a husband. He gave you a helpmate. But he's number one. So when you start getting intimate with him, he doesn't want you to leave him. He won't tell you, go and fix your relationship. It will be you to give him boundaries. If you don't give him boundaries, he will ruin your marriage. Because he will never tell you you're neglecting your wife. He won't say that. He won't say you're neglecting your husband. Moses is with God 40 days, 40 nights on the mountain. Hasn't gone down to his wife. His wife doesn't. Even, and then he comes down full of the anointing, full of power. He has to have a veil on. Do you think he's going to lay with his wife? <laughs> Moses had his son before he started going up the mountain. After that, we don't know if Moses never had any other children. So you can tell that the intimacy was no longer there. Paul meets God and he says, I don't want to get married anymore. It's like, wait a minute. Whoa. Because you have to remember the original intention of kids was to continue what you started. The desire for sex, God put it in us so that we can procreate. We can enjoy the process. It is not the center of marriage, but it is important in a marriage. Because once you get married, you realize there are other things that are encompassing it. That if that's the only thing you went into it for, it will die. Mm -hmm. Imagine being married to, to, to Jesus. Obviously, the Lord is, you know, we are married to him, but, but think about that for a second. A man who's going city to city doing what God wants, spending all night praying. Why aren't you in bed right now? Where are you? You become a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the marriage true. will die. No, let's be real, people. Yeah. It will die. <laughs> oh, it's bad. God won't tell you, yeah, your wife needed thou. Go. Now nah, he's saying, I'm number one. The more you spend time with him, yeah, I'm number one. That's where I belong. Your wife needs to know I'm number one. Your husband needs to know I'm number one. So also God doesn't permit people to enter into this place if you're not mature because it can destroy you. Hey. That's why Paul starts saying, uh, before you fast, yes. go talk to your spouse. Yes. Wow. Wow. So that scripture is in First Corinthians 7, 3 to 5. And uh, Apostle, Apostle Paul is advising, he's saying, no one in any marital relationship has the right to jump into fasting without the agreement and consent of their partner. 
I think I should repeat that again. That is in 1 Corinthians 7, 3 to 5. It says, no one in a marital relationship has the right to jump into fasting without the agreement and consent of their partner. Hey, that's great. That's great. That's great. That is great. So that you don't deny them their right. Notice Paul is giving that advice, but there is no scripture that says, before thou fastest, go and talk. He's giving you a tip. Mm. Because yeah. God wants you to fast. That's why Jesus said, when you fast, he didn't say, if you fast. God is expecting you to do that. But yes. Paul comes in and says, wait, 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 wait. He wants you to do that. But remember, you're also in covenant with somebody. Can you clear it up before you do that? Notice God will be willing for you to violate that vow. <laughs> and he won't say you sinned. I don't think you're understanding what. <laughs> That's why men of God divorce. That's why women of God, powerful prophets, even like me. Hey. You go through divorce and you wonder, how did I get? Nah, it's true. There are things I'm sure I neglected big time because the closer I got to God, even my, my view of life of everything changed. Wow. Hey, that's, that's very profound. That is very, very deep. So before you jump and milk any conclusion, maybe it's something you, you, you read online, it was maybe a gossip in one of the blogs or anything. So before you jump into any conclusion and you start throwing in words and judging men of God, talking about like a, there's a post I saw claiming that the reason why men of God are divorcing is because maybe they're speaking about sexual immorality in the church, accusing men of God with maybe even sisters and and vice versa as well. So that could not be the case. But generally just a commitment to Jesus, a commitment to the word and a commitment to see that one has attained the reward and even the prize that is set for them that already could be such a great reason. And I think from the example that uh, the man of God has given Prophet Lovi, saying that imagine if you're the wife of Jesus, just the imagination of that. You remember even Jesus was going to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. The other time he, he's, he has just changed town, he's in another place preaching the gospel. The other time he's with his disciples, maybe somewhere he's, uh, he's resting where they are trying to fish the whole night. So it was a life full of movement, full of fasting, full of prayer and preaching. That wasn't a life of now vacations and uh, shopping and a life, a life of may maybe partying and everything. It was a very different life, just committed to his mission. But, uh, I'm also inspired by that because it shows how men have 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 for chosen to leave everything just because of the master. We all call just to serve and dev wholeheartedly and with everything just to take it out to the Lord. So let me know what you think on the comment section. I believe this video has been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to hit the like button so that definitely YouTube will be able to recommend this video to so many more and will be able to change life and build people together. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I love to hear what you have to say on the comment section. So write to me on the comment section and see you on the next video.